Z Standards fans, and welcome to another episode of Albert Square After Dark, your weekly EastEnders podcast. This week, discussing the episodes broadcast between the 16th and the 19th of September 2024. Hello there. How are you this week? Are you well? I hope you are. Yes, you're looking good. Looking good. I like that colour on you. Uh, hello, Ray. How are you this week? I'm good, thank you, Rob. How are you? And most importantly, yes. how is Monroe, right. your dog? So, my dog, Monroe, okay, he had to have a bit of surgery this week nothing serious or anything but he had to have a few like lumps and bumps removed he had like a bit of a a gathering of fat on his shoulder which looks a lot scarier than it is but it like it's quite like a sort of protuberance kind of coming out of his legs we had to get that kind of taken off and he had another little sort of molds and bumps that they wanted to sort of sort him out so take him to the theater take him to take him to the theater yeah took him to see a show um (laughs) then he went into theater and Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> um, and um, he fortunately was let out the same day because if he'd been kept in overnight, oh. I, I would have been a mess. I would have been. I don't know how like parents do this with actual children. Like it was devastating. I was so heartbroken mm. because he sort of came in. We managed to get him home. And he's sort of just like lying on the sofa, completely zoned out from the anaesthetic, Aww. just sort of moaning and whining and all that kind of thing, can barely move, his tongue hanging out slightly because he was just all so, so zoned out. He's a lot better now the anaesthetic's worn off and he's sort of, he's got to wear this vest to cover up all his stitches. It's like a baby grow. Aww. It's so cute, Aww. but he's not He's not happy at all. So he's, he's in a mood with us for putting him through all that hell, even though it's for his own good. They don't even know that, pets, do they? They don't understand that you can't reason no. with him. No. no. No, exactly. Well, so, he's on the mend there. He's on the mend, important. so good, all is well. Good. All is well with my dog, so Aww. that's okay. Um, which is fine, because um, I couldn't have coached with two terrible exits from my life this week. <gasps> two terrible losses this week. No, I definitely know. not. Bobby's gone. Bye-bye, Bobby. I'm very sad that Bobby's gone, I have to say. But do you know what? what? I know we're going to get to it all. We will I thought get it was to a it. really good exit, actually. You liked it? Did we... you like his exit? Yeah, I thought it was okay. a really good exit. And by the end by the end of it, I was like, yeah, I think you need to go now. Now you've explained it all. Yeah, probably yeah. time for you to go. Even though at the start of the week, I was like, yeah. why is he leaving? Why yeah. would you go, Bobby? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah Although, I there was a massive bone of contention, I think, oh, amongst, a few, amongst a few people about yeah. the destruction of the Freddie and Bobby relationship. And yeah. I have a feeling that... You kind of the only people that were keeping Bobby around were Anna and Freddie. All right, he, mm. you know, yeah, his family great, but they were the people yeah. that were keeping him in Walford. So if Clay Milne and Russell decides he wants to leave, the only way you're going to realistically get rid of Bobby is if you wreck the Freddie and Bobby relationship, isn't it? Really, because otherwise he was just going to stay. It would be, there wouldn't have been realistic for Bobby to want to leave otherwise. I don't know. I think he could have still left without it, but also I think it made it feel more real that it. Yeah, it's a had shame. An argument with Freddie. Plus, we had it happen months ago with Freddie and Anna, so it weren't that out of. No, you know what I mean? it wasn't out of the blue, was it? Out of the blue for it to happen again. So. But hold your horses, Ray. We will get to that. We will get Sorry. to all that. We will <laughs> get to that. Ahead here, aren't we? we are jumped straight over a steeple there. We did. Um, We've got a few other things to discuss first. We'll start off with the Panasars and possibly Suki's dumbest move yet. We will get to that and why. Uh, So let's crack on with this week's Albert Square After Dark. So let's crack on this week. We're talking about Vinny's birthday uh, and the Panasars in general. So Suki and Eve are planning a big surprise party for Vinny. Mm -hmm. Doesn't Doesn't stay a surprise for very long. Um... I'm not entirely sure how they thought this was going to work because they had all this banning like planned, all these banners. One of which said he's not he's not gay, but anyone's but nobody's perfect, which was up there purely because it was being held in the gay bar. You know, yeah. it's yeah. Hey. Prince Albert, exactly. Albert. Um, Nish is meanwhile kind of trying to talk to Vinny and ask him like what he wants for his birthday. I quite enjoyed him on the phone the day before Vinny's birthday. Just like, what do you want for your birthday? <laughs> We've all done that. <laughs> We've all had that conversation with our parents. Yeah, it does happen. It does happen. Um, a slightly odd moment where Nish then sees a car and all this car is doing is driving around the square. Okay. But he gets suspicious about this car, calls somebody and then discovers that it's an undercover police car and that they're on to the chicken shops. 
had you forgotten about the chicken chops? Because I'd forgotten about the chicken chops. Yeah, a little bit. But I'm thinking maybe we're led to believe that that's not the first time he's seen that car. Maybe not. We haven't seen yeah. this for a while, have we? No, so we have He's spotted it a few times before. And I tell you what, he's 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 uh, deteriorated ever so slightly. Did you, not, did you not think? I think he's slow. Like, oh his, no, this, I didn't notice. I thought now. I thought I thought he was visibly sort of looking more like like weary and sort of struggling. He looked like he was struggling to breathe a little bit more. Like he was sort of. He looked like he, this illness is starting. To, yeah, it, but I mean, like it looked like this illness is starting to take effect on him slowly. Um, because this is a dying man, as we are reminded quite a lot this week. Um, is he? So, is he? No, no, I don't think he, is. he definitely is. I think. I think we're past the point now. Did I think. Pay off of, that doctor to no, just you know no no okay. Um, and well, also he's not getting any heart replaced transplants because I think there was a point where we believed that yeah. Nish's plan was like to pull Vinny's heart out of his chest with his bare hands and put it in yeah. his own or something yeah. crazy like that. Yeah. But it seems I thought there was a bit of confusion here because Nish, at that moment, when he finds out that the chicken shops are like at risk of being sort of raided Under by the surveillance. police, yeah, sort of then decides to give it to Vinny as his punishment mm. for you know yeah. betraying him. But he's been talking about these big plans that he's got for Vinny for quite a few weeks now. So I don't yeah. know. So when he was saying, I've got big plans, oh, I've got plans for you. Do you think he'd made those plans yet? No, I I think he was just saying that. I, mean, I don't know, actually. What did he have planned for him? Did he have anything planned for him? Just saying it to Vinny to get him off his yeah. back whilst he was plotting, plotting what he was going to do. Did he always think that this day was going to come where the chicken shops were going to be at risk of being... Of nah. being, of being Those linked? chicken shops have been undercover for a while, haven't they? They're not undercover, but you know what I mean. They've been safe for a while. Yeah. The Kentucky Fried does Cash. Seem bit, mm. Mm, does seem mm. a bit out of the blue, but... Mm. Well... So they are because obviously the chicken shops are a cover for money laundering. Yes. What is yeah. money laundering exactly? So from what I would understand <laughs> is they Sweet would innocent mind. any dodgy money that they've got, they'll right. put it through the chicken shop so that they're declaring the money still, so then they can actually put it in the bank account. But really, maybe it's cut whatever dodgy stuff they're up to selling drugs. Then they can be like, oh, yes, somebody bought five chicken nuggets, six mm -hmm. chips. Yes, that's what that money's from. Put right. It through. So, at no point do they wrap like five pound notes in breadcrumbs or anything like that and stick it in a fryer. <laughs> no, None of that think... happens, no? None of that happens. I don't think that's what it is. Right. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's my understanding. Okay. Of money <laughs> I think. Well, uh, yeah, because no point... that's why they're a front. That's why they call things right. a front. Yeah, yeah. So then it's like, oh, yeah, it's a chicken shop. Yeah. Um, it's got nothing really, to do with... they sell. They sell two chicken legs a week just to yeah. make it look like they're a yeah, chicken yeah. shop. But really, all the money that's gone through is from something dodgy. Right. And it's got nothing to do with washing machines or anything like that. It's money laundering nope. thing. Nothing to do with that. Right. Okay. Oh, maybe yeah. that's what money, washing the yes, money. You know, that's what it clean, means there. Uh, you're cleaning the money. Clean, yeah. Cleaning. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. It was very helpful for Vinny to explain that at one point to me this week. <laughs> I was like, right, got it, got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, So, mm -hmm. Vinny discovers that this party is happening and decides that he wants his dad there because this is potentially going to be his last birthday with Nish alive. And he's never yeah. had Nish there for a birthday before. Well, he kind of has because Nish has been there for last about year. two years. Yeah, 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 Nish has been there for about two years now. But I think what he means is... I know, never he said, had I've that. never had a beer with him on my never birthday Never had a beer with him well. on my birthday. Yeah. So I knew this was going to happen, by the way. I knew Vinny was going to be, was going to be the first to break. Knew this was going to happen. I don't know what Suki was thinking, putting him in charge of this. Ridiculous. No. It, well, it's a weird one, though, isn't it? Because I wasn't sure whether we were telling the truth, but Nish somehow realised that he was. Yeah, that he was being honest, and I went, "How does?" I Nish think he was. This, I think but... he. I think he was. So, I think Vin, in Vinny's mind, he was more than capable of separating the two mm. issues. Yes, we're going to rinse dad for every penny that he's got, but also, yes, I want my dad there for the last he's birthday that I can. Yeah. For his piece of dad, and I potentially want him there. In mm. Vinny's head, those two issues are run perfectly concurrently together. He can put them completely parallel to one another and both issues will still work perfectly in yeah. Vinny's mind. This is the man who once tried to wipe his fingerprints off of Spanner by wiping the piece of Spanner that he wasn't even holding. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> That's Vinny. That's yeah. the Vinny we're speaking Bless of. Him. 
Um, and Nish kind of has a brief change of heart at this moment. She's sort of like, oh, Vinny's softening. Oh, Nish, Vinny really wants me there. That's that's nice. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, I'm not going to give you these chicken chops. I'll think of something else to sort of give you for your birthday because his plan was... An actual present. An actual an present. Actual nice an actual present, present. present that's not yeah. going to land you in prison because yeah. his original plan was to make this big grand gesture at the party and give him, like, these things to sign and say, the chicken chops yeah. are all yours, son. Happy birthday. And Vinny was sort of basically signing his life away there and then. Um, but he has this change of heart and... And kind of gets this pendant that apparently has kind of gone through the Panasar his like male men, male men, yeah. Um, the <laughs> kind of Panasar family history. Uh, and gives it to, to Matt's yeah. birthday. Yeah. And it's quite this there's quite a nice pendant as well. It's just sort of yeah, like, yeah. on chain and it's all lovely. Family heirloom. Yes. And Vinny's quite touched by this uh, at the party. Uh, and Silsuki, and this is I. This was a rare moment of Suki dumbness for me. Like it, I, this was silly. I thought because mm-hmm. she sat. I got what her thinking was. Like, prove to me that you're not getting all. You're, you're not falling off the rails here with this. Prove to me he's not getting inside your head and bin that. Now, that could have happened at any point. All right, that could have happened at any point. Vinny, Vinny throwing this thing in the bin. All right, didn't have to happen there and then when Nish was literally across the floor watching the whole thing. It was thing. dumb because normally Suki would be watching out. She'd be on. Yeah, she'd be yeah. on that. Yeah. So I thought yeah. that was a bit careless actually the way that they did the way that they did that because I know what you mean. And also, if I'm honest with you, I think Suki would be in a bit harsh because that is a so family heirloom. So yeah. if Vinny does want to keep a family heirloom, no matter what yeah. he thinks about his dad. It's his right to decide yeah. whether he wants to keep a bit of his family history. Do you know what I think would have worked better there? Is mm. because at, at first she turned around and went, Well, I've never seen that before, implying that Nish had just made this whole Nish yeah, just made yeah. this whole thing up. And if she'd stuck with that and Vinny yeah, had gone, then... Oh, well, screw dad then, and then would have chucked it in the bin. Yeah. That would have been, I think, would have felt more convincing at that moment. Mm. But instead, he sort of basically just throws it in the bin really openly. And to the point where I almost felt a bit sorry for Nish at that moment. Because he was it, what the girl? That's weird, isn't it? That's supposed to feel I sorry know. for Nish. I know. Yeah. yeah. I den- I genuinely felt a bit sorry for him at that moment yeah, because he I was did. trying to actually because at that moment he kind of thought there's at least one person that is as giving me a bit of a crumb of sympathy. All right. Mm. Yes, Nishi thinking is completely and utterly warped and he has no sort of idea well, about what he's done to his hmm. family but at that moment he kind of thought his son loved him and just to have do his you... heart thrown in the bin along with the pendant at that moment he was devastated by that do you agree with what suki said about his intentions in giving it to uh, Vinny? because she was like oh he's just trying to control you and get... but i for me it felt like he was genuinely just trying to give his son a family heirloom i didn't feel I... like he was trying to control him personally i think but... a little bit of column a a little bit of column b I That's think there was, I think work. there was some genuineness there. I do, mm. I really do. Um, that kind of wanting to keep control over a situation is always there with Nish. You know, if, mm. if he was, if he, if he's giving someone a birthday present or he's asking for a cup of coffee, that level of control is always there. Mm. So I don't think that I think Suki probably did have a point with that, but I feel like Nish knows his his final moments are coming. I think so. Mm. I feel like the, that would have kind of. Come to the come to the surface more yeah, than the controlling element. Yeah, that was the element. priority rather than yeah. the control side of things. Yeah, because bear in mind, he changed his mind about the chicken chop thing at that point as well. He was just yeah, like, exactly. do you know what? That's actually, why I... I thought it would be yeah. more genuine. Yeah. So this is going to be a genuine moment. I'm going to give him this pendant that really means a lot to me. Mm-hmm. But that moment where Vinny chucks it in the bin turns everything on its head again. And by the end of the week, we've got Evil Nish back again, who is sitting there really smugly, really cheerfully, watching Vinny sign his life away as he signs the chicken shops over to him. And Mm -hmm. Vinny's screwed now, surely. So what happens from here? I don't know, because he's saying that Hart is going to still be doing everything and that Vinny's hands would be clean. And why do they all believe that? Well, Suki doesn't believe it. Suki doesn't believe it. She's very sus. She's like, why is he handing over the chicken shops? Because in Suki's brain, I think she's thinking, why is he handing over the dodgy business to you, Vinny? Yeah. And not the ones that are actually legit, because they have got legit ones, haven't they? Yeah, they've even got the mirror. You know, it's this is coming. Why is Vinny not questioning that as well? Because he's Vinny. I've got the chicken. Because he's Vinny. Vinny's delighted. This is Vinny. (laughs) Honestly, (laughs) man. The worst criminal on earth, and he's given them to mm. Vinny. Even Vinny should be suspicious at that moment. But no, yeah, Vinny is no. just happy that he's finally got a bit of Panasar, uh, Panasar Empire to yeah. sort of lord over. Even if it's just the chicken shops, he's delighted with that because he's got a load of he's got a chain of chicken shops that are his and only his. And, he and he's to delighted touch. about that. No, and he's Supposedly. delighted. 
Yeah. No. Um, but obviously Harty has, you know, been to this is the guy that was running the chicken shots at the moment. He's now got his hands clean of it because they're all Vinnies. Harty's not even going to be involved in this now. Harty's probably on a plane somewhere to Dubai at this point. He's miles away. He's 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 made a run for it. So Vinny is now in sole ownership of these chicken shops well, and the police are onto them. So, so next why week, hasn't this told him that Hart is still going to be doing stuff then if he's because there? he's because he because Vinny's first question, to be fair, was well, what about the money laundering side of things? Does mm. that I I need to I don't want him, any involvement in that. I don't want my name to be associated with that. And this then turned around to him and oh yeah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. That's Hart's that's Hart's job. You don't need to worry about that. Mm. So as far as Vinny's concerned, when he signed that the money laundering thing, he might get he might get some money out of it, but so it's all going to be dealt with Hart. Well. It doesn't matter because the police are basically on onto it. So I would imagine next week right, then he gets okay. arrested. Oh, I've got yeah. Because right, if you okay. remember, yeah, Harty yeah, throughout yeah, the week yeah. was sort of like, no, this needs to happen now. This right. needs to happen now. Yes. Like we're we're oh, yeah. we're going under yeah. soon. So by next week, I think then he's going to end up getting arrested. Would that stand up in court anyway? We were investigating these chicken shops before it Vinnie owned them. Now he's just signed them over like last week. Unless Nish is going to have changed the dates on these contracts or something that he's signed. Nish will have covered himself, I think. Mm. And Vinny's Just realistically, rubbish, criminal surely stuff. be like, yeah, but you were the owner when we were investigating this. No, I don't think it's going to be that deep, to no. be honest. I think it's just going to be a case of Vinny. I don't think it, we, well, it it's not going to get to court. Rob. It's not going to get to court. So we're just going to have Vinny arrested and he's yeah. probably going to get... It's for police. They're going to take one look at that contract and think that'll do. Throw him straight in prison. <laughs> They're not going to be any... Oh, Suki's like, going to have a plan. Eve might help yes. get him out. Eve will think of all this, hopefully. Yes, there's options yeah. there. But I also mm. feel like this is not Nish's only punishment for them. There's going no, to be other stuff be. kicking off as well. Yeah. Especially as Nish is now clearly in his final months, he's mm. going to become more and more dangerous because he's going to have less and less to lose. So yeah. the Panasars are in deep doo-doo, I think. It's, it remains to be seen. So we shall see how that all plays out. So what about Nish's grandchildren, Avani and Nugget? Do you think they're going to get anything? Well, let's talk about Avani for a second before we oh, move yeah, on to Varney that. Oh, yeah, Avani we saw this week. Yeah. Yes, Va- Avani at the start of the week, uh, she's got herself into a little bit of a tryst, a little bit of a relationship. Uh, and Barney isn't too happy about this because uh, he's sort of... Bless you know, him. He bless him. He's a bit of a, bit of a, what would you call him? Like a geek or a nerd? One of a boffin? One of them. No, I don't call him a sort of... boffin. I hate that word, <laughs> boffin. Like calling, like being clever is a negative thing. It's not a negative cl- thing, thing. I'm a boffin. We're yeah, I used boffins, to get called right? it. I used we're to get called a boffin boffins. and I'd be like, well, what's wrong with that? We're I would boffins. call him a stickler for the rules. Right, yes, fair enough. In yes, he's a stickler for the rules. Uh, he was certainly, he's certainly a stickler for the rules when it comes to guys going out with underage girls, which I feel like is fair enough. Fair enough. You know, fair <laughs> enough. He comes across uh, Avani snogging Mason. I think this is yes. the same guy from The Crush, isn't it? So this is why this I guy was so, introduced. Yeah. And this is why Ivani was so openly flirtatious with these college kids. Now, that's one thing. I can imagine Ivani doing something like that. I think this is a storyline mm-hmm. that works perfectly for Ivani. This is the sort yep. of thing we've sort of become accustomed to with Ivani, that she is quite overly flirtatious, giving her age. So this is Ivani. And with, usually with older men And with men older men. Well. And with older yeah. men as well. Because she, I think you could probably argue some sort of daddy issues there because she's not exactly had oh, a God. regular daddy Perhaps, bigger in her yeah. life, you know. Don't even you bring, that, if you want to bring yeah. Freud into it, you know. But <laughs> You're um, always doing that, aren't always you? Always doing that. Any opportunity, <laughs> bring Freud. Bring the Freud in, you know. So, <laughs> um, but what I would say is that uh, Mason's a bit of an issue here because Barney openly turns around to him and says, uh, "You realise she's fifteen, yeah." Mason doesn't seem too bothered about that, and he's stalking her by the end of a scene. His so, response is to give her a yeah. tinny and kiss and her. What? Not scared. Huh. Mm. Um, so that's going to be yeah. a thing. That's, I think Ivani's now in trouble, isn't she? We're not, we we yeah. will be. We are yet to discover exactly where this will lead, but I suspect not good places. I wonder if this is going to go in a similar situation to the Tiff drama. You know, with the oh, sort of the, with, uh, with uh, the uh, e, Evie, Eve. and the. Queen Evie. Evie. Queen Evie. Uh, I wonder if we're going to be in a similar sort of situation to that where she's just going to get kind of pulled into a sort of dark and yeah, murky world. Why would an 18 year old mm. knowingly go with a 15? When someone yeah. just said, oh, she's a schoolgirl. She was yeah. to school with me. She's 15. Yeah. She's wagging, sc- wagging, yeah. sorry, wagging. school, whatever Skiving. everyone calls yeah. it. Yeah. Skiving. And then goes, all oh, right, no problem. Like, why don't you go after someone your own age, mate? That's weird. 
Mm. He's gonna be a he's gonna be a bad egg, this guy, isn't he? I think so. So we shall see how that all plays out. I'm here but for it though. It's very on brand for Avani, isn't it's it? Very on brand for Avani, and I think it's a very good story to give Avani. To be yeah. honest with you, Avani reminds me of someone I used to know, and she would have done something like this all day long. So uh, to me, this this is this does not feel odd at all. This mm-hmm. is totally on brand for Avani, and I'm pleased that Avani's getting a story. Good for her. And this mm-hmm. inadvertently will bring Priya in for a, for a slightly yeah. more serious story as well, and possibly Nugget as well. So I'm all for this. Bring Do you it know on. what, though? Back in the day, she says, I don't know when back in the day is, but I feel like this wouldn't be that frowned upon, that kind of age gap, 18 and 15. No, back, back in, in the day is what I'm back talking. Back in day, yes. So I'm wondering, will Priya be that against, or will she be like, oh, it's that, because Ivan is very like, it's only three years, it's fine. Yeah, I don't imagine this isn't something that Priya wouldn't do at Ivan's age this whatsoever. This is what I mean, I think, yeah. I think, But I think it, it, it's the whole thing of, like, yeah, but you're my daughter. That means that you're mm, not allowed true. to do this. If you were someone do else's I daughter. Do as I say, not as I do. Exactly. If you were someone else's daughter, I'd be like, yeah, crack on, girl. But yeah, because you're my it. daughter, that's wrong. And it is wrong, because she's underage. So well, yeah, and totally. The show, I yeah, think, totally. probably kind of needs to address that like that's bad all right don't be doing yeah. that so that's a bad yeah. thing to do and i think the fact that mason found out that she is underage and clearly didn't care is going to be something that's going to be addressed further down the line as well so this is a bit of a murky storyline in avani's way i feel mm-hmm. but this is why that they've hired a slightly older actress to play avani i suspect oh, this of is course. why now it makes sense now it makes yeah, sense yeah you reckon there they had this go. planned all along i reckon there so i reckon mm. so conditioned by the fact that avani one of their first lines was, all right, daddy, to Marty, when she just oh, randomly met true. him. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. yeah so this was true. possibly always in the pipelines for Avani. Yeah. So we shall okay. see where this goes. Um, right, ladies and gents, let's move on to the next story. Uh, on to Reese now. Uh, he spends the week making posters, which he gets wrong. Sonia is <laughs> definitely guilty of these crimes. He sticks on a poster, which isn't terribly helpful. Um, and he's also attempted to get signatures for his petition because if you get 10,000 signatures, it gets mentioned in the House of Commons. Can you, can you imagine? <laughs> he's never going to get 10,000 The Prime Minister the... standing up and talking about Sonia Fowler. Now. Yeah, you I know, know. Yeah, yeah. But can you imagine the Prime Minister, like Reese sat at home watching Prime Minister's Question Times? And uh, just like the Prime Minister stands up and starts getting questioned about Sonia Fowler from London Borough somewhere. That'd be quite fun. I'd enjoy that. Yeah, it would be. It would be. What's upon a time? Well, to be fair, once upon a time, they were talking about Deirdre Rashid and Corrie in the House of Commons. Like, oh, that actually true. was a thing. That's that was true. a thing. Yeah, that's, that is true. That's how big soaps were at one point. That's crazy, isn't mm, it? Absolutely that ridiculous. Is, isn't it? Imagine writing to your MP about the local about the soap that you've just watched on the telly. Can you do something about Deirdre and Corrie, please? What is wrong with you? Get a grip. Anyway, I mean, I love it, but all the same, it's a good story. And you know what? The Sun newspaper took complete and utter ownership over the fact that Deirdre had been released from prison. Obviously, they because they plan oh, these things God. so long in advance. Oh God! Because they plan these anyway. things so long in advance, they. Like, obviously, she was only ever going to be in there for three weeks, but they decided that because they'd set this petition up, it was purely down to them that she'd been released. Ridiculous. Um, so Reese is kind of hoping for a similar yeah. sort of outcome. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, Teddy, meanwhile, needs mm. uh, Reese to sort of earn his keep because obviously Teddy paid off that massive debt and keep his accounts in order from this sort of weird ex that he's got going on in Excuse the background. Excuse me. How much money has Teddy got? How much money has he got? He paid, what is going on? He paid... He paid 13 grand off yep. to buy Reese's debt. I know that yep. he's, he's expecting it back. Yeah. Two grand he just Two gave grand, him to yeah. pay Eve. And now he's saying, can you hide how much money I've got? Yeah. How much money has he got to be just chucking it? He just bought the house. He's just bought the yeah. house, number one. He's and he's rich. still got money that he needs to hide. He's a rich little teddy bear, isn't he? <laughs> mm. What yeah. is he up to there to what have is got teddy? that money? Who is Teddy? What is Teddy? Maybe Who he's part this... of the chicken shots, eh? Yeah, maybe. Who is this ex of his as well, do we yeah, think? Yeah. Do not we think... Chrissy. I'm glad I've No, it's not Chrissy. It's it. definitely not Chrissy. Now. Um, one of two things I think is gonna happen. Either what? this ex of his is gonna turn out to be a return. Yeah. Yeah. Or this PI friend of his that he mentions to Reese this week. Yeah. And imagine if that PI friend of his turns out to be David. Like that's going to mess Risa. That'll screw Risa up massively, won't it? Won't it? Interest? No, surely no. Um, Bianca will be back on the horizon at some point soon as well. Mm. So that would really make things See, quite messy for Reese if I... David turns up investigating that. I don't know why David would suddenly be a PI, but oh, it's... 
Well, my brain has just gone to the... He's going to sort this PI out anyway. Mm. The PI is obviously going to discover it with Reese, and Reese yeah. is going to kill the PI. <laughs> Reese is going to kill the PI. Him. Hey, maybe. Maybe. If we're going down serial killer territory, Oh, I hope not? we don't, but... He doesn't look like we are now, does he? We were convinced. I, um, I'm not mm. sure. It's been a while. It's I, I still think Brenda is a dead woman walking. Yeah, true. It's all going to go yeah. in. A, yeah, it's all going to go in a John Stape direction. I'm convinced of it. Mm. It's all going to go in that sort. Well, then I think mm. this PI who we've never met is a goner. You reckon? You think he's going to be the PI? Yeah. Okay. I reckon the PI is definitely going to uncover the truth, mm. and then Reese is going to have to figure out how to silence them somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I think the PI is going to be turned out to be someone that we know. Maybe the same PI that um, Anna hired that time to try and find. Oh him. yeah, I loved him. <laughs> Oh, we called Gabe. We're Gabriel. Yeah. I, oh, he was great. Like hiding in the bushes and then sort of like looking over his shoulders and sort of sneaking away. Loved him. <laughs> he was like somebody get you get out of a nineties out of a twenties spy movie spoof. He was marvelous. Yes. Bring him back yep. full time. Absolutely. Um. So whilst Reese is sort of panicking about all that, he's also trying to uh, hand out these petitions and put out the mm -hmm. posters. Mo. Who can I say? Mo is an absolute dick all of this week. I thought in in the in the, in the um, Bobby storyline as well. I thought she was quite unpleasant. Yeah. And why why does she not believe Sonia? Like Mo, you delivered Sonia's delivered her baby, baby for her when she was sixteen. Yeah. Why are you yeah. suddenly hating on Sonia so much? It's that kind of typical soap troupe where someone gets yeah. accused of something, and these people that have known this person for years and years and years all of a sudden think, well, obviously it must be them. That makes total sense. Yeah, yeah, and they're scum, absolutely. Where they've got no evidence and they're just working yeah. on hearsay. It's just one of those situations. It's always quite frustrating mm -hmm. to watch. But I mean, someone like Mo. Yeah, I can imagine doesn't particularly care whether Sonia is mm. guilty or innocent. It's just something fun to gossip about. Something to um, gossip around, yeah. yeah. Take some bets on it, pub about it. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. And she rings the papers up because why not get herself a little well, bit of cash I mean. on the it side. Felt a bit, it felt a bit too much that, that Mers then decided to ring mm. it. Oh, right, you think she got money out of it. I would have thought it. so, yeah. I would have thought Otherwise, so. Otherwise, why? Because this journalist turns up at the school. Yeah, exactly. I think it must have been that she got like 50 quid mm. or something from the journalist. Because this journalist turns up and base and Reese is kind of forced to give them an interview. It realizes, okay, this might be this might work in my favor. I can sort of give some good publicity. And then, then the next day, this interview appears in the police in the paper. Uh and it Reese is kind of quite pleased with it. He's like, Yeah, no, this looks good. I'm quite happy with this. Um, just as Hugh arrives on the square, Debbie's dad, to tell Reese that the funeral for Debbie is on Monday. And he, by the way, is absolutely convinced that Sonia murdered her. Well, yeah, fair enough, though. The evidence does point at Sonia, doesn't it? Given the yeah. fact that they were going to get some money out of it, she stopped the sale of the house. I yeah. can't really blame him for thinking it. She's in do the papers. Think, do you think Brenda will, though? Do you think Brenda would believe it's Sonia? Because I feel like she'd still think it's Reese or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, this is why I think Daniel, Brenda is a dead woman Brenda's walking. A yeah, I really do. I think I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. Brenda is going to still think it's Reese. I think yeah. she will land on that first. Hugh, I think, will sort of just go where he's told. <laughs> uh, and in fact, I was surprised that, that that Hugh was given enough independence to actually be in these scenes on his own without Brenda this week. I was kind of I was surprised that she let him do that. Well, she I think it was him. because well they needed. Don't forget, he came because he needed the um, body to be signed. Yes. Signed away, you know. Signed what I mean? away, yeah. Signed over to them, yeah. Signed yeah. over, and they next, the next because Reese the next of so kin, yeah. I can imagine he will like Brenda. Just let me go and get this done, right? You stay here. I'm going to go on my own and sort yeah. it. You don't need to get into an argument, otherwise he might not sign it over. Yes, so I could see that being the case. So, is anything going to come out of this funeral? It's on Monday, well, we're told. Surely, so... yeah, surely. Otherwise, why mention mm. it at all? Mm. Brenda, probably. Brenda. Brenda's going to stand up and say, Reese, how dare you be here? You obviously I reckon, did it. Yeah, Something I think like so. That, sure Brenda's going to yeah. kick off. Brenda's going to kick off like Aunt Sal does at funerals. Yeah. Are we going to discover some more of Debbie and Reese's mutual friends who might go, well, Maybe. actually, Debbie told me that, you know, Reese were a bad one and something else. We might uncover some secrets from before we, before we met Reese about Debbie. Yeah, scratch away at their relationship a little bit for us to mm. discover a little bit more. I think we might meet this PI next week. Yeah, and other yeah. stuff, and other stuff will be kicking off next week as well. I think it's going to be quite a big. Well, I get the feeling this might be a little bit of a big week for the Reese storyline next week. So we yeah. shall see. Well, if everybody makes it out alive at the end of next week, I will be surprised. 
That's what I would guess. Really? Mm, I think so. That soon? I think something monumental is going to... Something quite significant may occur next week with the Reese storyline, I suspect. We shall have to wait Mm -hmm. and see. Uh, Right, ladies and gents. A quick little story before we get on to the Bobby stuff, and that is Harvey and Jean. Uh, Brief little discussion about Harvey and Jean now. Mad scenes at the start of the week. Absolute insanity. Where Kathy weird. wins. <laughs> weird. Where so Kathy weird. wins. Why was Derbert O'Leary on EastEnders? Well, but also kind of like, why not? Because people do yeah. win radio competitions, yeah. I guess. But it just seemed a bit random. You know it's, not, it's not the maddest thing that, that Dermot O'Leary's ever been seen doing on TV. When Russell T Davis wrote a script called Years and Years, which was basically the show that was set a little, you kind of went a year into the future on every single episode. At one point, okay. he had Dermot O'Leary being a newsreader as himself, BBC News, which I thought was bizarre. So for Dermot O'Leary to be on the radio handing out holidays to Greece, I thought that was that that, that kind of works. But it was just surprised Fair me enough. that Dermot O'Leary himself was the voice of it. And you know why that happened was because Sharon Marshall wrote Monday's episode and yes. she works on this morning that Dermot O'Leary presents as well. Well, so that's probably how so that she all said, played Damn out. It. Do you fancy Germs. having a voiceover on EastEnders for an yeah. app? I need someone. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, nice sense. little cameo. Nice little cameo. Does he, does he even present radio at all, Dermot? <laughs> He will have done at least at one point in his career. Okay. It's Dermot O'Leary. Right, okay. I would have thought he d- I don't know if he still does, but he definitely Fair does uh, or did at some point. Anyway, Kathy has won this trip to Greece. The only reason she, she knows that she wins this competition, by the way, is thanks to Barney, who has just been reading yeah, up essentially, on... Yeah, essentially, yeah. Yeah, who's just been reading up on DNA, which stands for... Deoxymation Marshall, Yes, exactly that. Yes, uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, it stands for. That's what I said, yeah. I didn't read that, I didn't read that, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. (laughs) Um, uh, So yeah, the question basically is, what does DNA stand for? That's the answer. Barney had just been reading about it and sort of telling it telling it to Harvey. And Harvey was aware that Kathy was entering this competition. Kathy gets through on the radio and Harvey sat there listening to it in the taxi. The question of what is does DNA stand for gets asked and Harvey literally sprints through the square, pushes away for it going, DNA, DNA, it's DNA. So that's how Kathy wins the competition. It's quite mad. It's quite, it was quite... It was well, quite as, nasty, soon, as soon as we had that scene with Barney and Harvey talking about that being what DNA stands yeah. for, like, where's that going to come up Why? again in this episode? It's definitely yeah. coming up again. Again, isn't it? When yeah. he goes, oh, you'll never need to know that information in life. No one will ever ask you that question. Mm. Well, someone's about to ask you, Harvey, yeah. in this episode. Clearly. Dermot O'Leary, no less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think Dern- Dermot O'Leary no, was going to be the genuine for the plot. I'll give you that. But That's yeah, true. there we are. Um, but anyway, Harvey has won this holiday because Kathy gives it to him. So it's like, fair play. Thanks a lot for, for winning that. You should have that. Um, I mean, by rights, Barney should probably have had it. But we'll, we'll not, you know. Technically. Yeah, but Barney um, wouldn't have got the first answer to do with the London streets, to be fair. That's true. That's true. Through, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um Harvey kind of has this holiday and it's sort of like, well, this is the perfect way to win Jean back. Because obviously Jean is still annoyed about the whole thing that went on with Maya or Maya, however yeah. you pronounce it. So <laughs> No, I know. But that's just how I know Maya now. That's because of what Jean said. Maya Mawa, however you Maya, pronounce however it. However you pronounce it, yeah. Um she's still annoyed at him, so she kind of doesn't want to go to Greece with him. So Harvey Still attempting to run around, says that, well, why don't you and Stacey go? And Jean's like, well, that sounds excellent. Yeah, okay, let's do that then. Absolutely fine. So, I mean, Jean and Harvey do kind of have conversations this week, and it sort of seems that she is going to forgive him at some point. But at the moment, he's sort of still in the doghouse. But mm-hmm. ultimately, I think they'll be fine, right? Why, why are they going on holiday to Greece, though? What is this all about? Is this just about a way anything. of us... Just that Harvey's trying to make amends to Jean yeah, and it's a yeah, nice way of doing it. Yeah, not everything all I would think... has this really deep meaning behind no, it. I but I, re- no, but I would just... No, my thought process was, who's going to look after riffing. Stacey's like... What, uh-huh. How many kids has she got? Four? Oh, about 12. And Charlie? Yeah. If Jean, if Jean and Stacey aren't there, I know you said Martin's going Martin. to help out. Is Martin, that it? Well, yeah, Martin. Okay, fair yeah. enough. All Eve's right, the, oh, no, well, no, Eve's not there anymore. No, Eve's yeah. not there anymore. They, the Slaters have got Moe's there. Freddie. You know, they've uh, got, Fre- yeah. Freddy, they've got yeah, options. Okay. There's always okay. options to look after a, a child somewhere in the Slater house. So I think There's a lot right. of kids there, but there anyway, is. fair it's enough. like an arc, that house. Yeah. Mm. I think they'll be all right. I think they'll be all right. There we are then. So we'll move on now to the big story of the week, which was Bobby, Anna, Freddie and Cindy and Ian. So, bye bye, Bobby. We are at the Bobby storyline. I am gutted Bobby's gone. And I have to say, 
I kind of feel like there was a bit of wasted opportunity with Bobby by the end. I feel like he was a little bit underused by the time we kind of came, we came around to this week. I thought that the him and Cindy stuff had a lot, lot more potential that they could have kind of wrung some drama out of. And they got some out true. of it, but I feel like there was more that could have been done, really. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, but then Cindy had to just act like she were okay with everything, didn't she? Otherwise, she'd have essentially been homeless. Well, uh... Yeah, but can I say, this week, I enjoy Cindy as a character. I do. She's fun. This week is the first time I've sort of been like, I need you to be punished. I need you to have your oh, like, Cindy. comeuppance. Yeah, I really, <gasps> really wanted her have, to have her comeuppance. I can't wait for the moment where the Schadenfreude hits for Cindy when that affair comes out and she gets it all thrown back in her face. I felt that she really deserved it this week with Bobby. I really did. <laughs> I absolutely loved Cindy this week. <laughs> it was evil Everything this week. About Absolute cow. I know, I know. It's just, it's the drama, Rob. I love it. I know, she was I brilliant. Know. It were brilliant. It were honestly brilliant. But yeah, like absolute evilness, especially yeah. all the staring she did with Bobby yeah. and Anna. And then, like, how can you do that to your own daughter? I but know. then she does feel very strong. But then, well, he did kill her other daughter. Yeah, so that little detail. That little, thing, that little detail. You kind I of get it. But it's know, kind of fascinating. Evil. It's kind of fascinating with Cindy. I almost kind of think that she's one of these people that will do anything in order to get true happiness for herself. And yet she doesn't know exactly what would ever make her happy. So she's sort mm -hmm. of doing this constant battle with life and the people around her, trying to get to an aim that she doesn't actually know what it is. It's kind of a fascinating I'm, character trait in someone, I think. In you're a kind of saying what Bobby said, and I'm jumping ahead a bit, but when mm. they were at the grave, at the headstone, whatever you want to call it. Graveyard. And he was saying, <laughs> graveyard. There we go. Yeah. Cemetery yeah. is what I would Cemetery, to Cemetery, yeah, that works too. And, yeah. uh, Bobby was saying to her, like, you wear, you know, it's your own guilt that all this is. It's mm. kind of what you said. It's in interesting. A way. Like, yeah. She's, yeah, she's trying to figure out all these feelings that she's got. And mm. she's just constantly staring with the people. And she's like, like, kind of like you say, is that going to make her more happy? Mm. Making sure everyone else is under her control almost. But even the stuff with Junior, like, it's sort of still there in the background. But I don't, but I think once that gets kind of revealed, I don't think she'll be as interested in Junior anymore because she's just constantly, nah. she's, she's a bit of an adrenaline junkie in mm -hmm. terms of like, she needs her life to be constantly exciting. And it's like, she when she came back to Walford, she was pining over George. And yet we'd seen that she wasn't happy with George when she was with him. So she's yeah. never truly happy with her own life. And then yeah. yet we'll do anything. I just thought what she's going to do. It. She's, she's going to have an affair. She's going to have mm. another affair. And keep that from Junior with David when he's back, so that Maybe. she's got she's having an affair and yeah, then having with, an affair yeah. within the affair. It would, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> Nothing will put it put it past Cindy. No. Um, so obviously, previously on EastEnders, Anna has discovered that she's pregnant. Yes, uh, oh, yeah, that and, little thing. Yeah, and quite quickly it sort of becomes apparent. Yeah, I don't really want this baby. This isn't yeah. great. This isn't the situation that it's supposed to be. And Gina is very rightly encouraging her. Well, it's your body. You know, yeah. I will I will do what you want with whatever mm -hmm. support you want, whether you want to keep it or whether you want to get rid of it, whatever you need, we will make happen. So makes an appointment on the laptop uh, and that is then seen by Freddie. Who, yeah. right, where are we at with Freddie at the moment? I mean, I think I was with him until he kissed Anna, basically, because I thought I totally believed all of his utter turmoil that he was going through. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm falling in love with my best mate's girlfriend and I don't want to do that. Yeah, I I loved it. That was fine. I kind of believed all that, but then he kissed her, which I guess had to happen at some do you, point. Do you know where I think he overstepped the mark was going to the clinic though. Like if you're that best yeah. mates with your with Bobby, you shouldn't yeah. have really done. That. And I get that he weren't thinking of that in that moment. He was thinking of Anna and that she needed support. Yeah, but for me, if you genuinely believe she needed somebody there, he should have mm. probably said to Gina, "You need to go." It shouldn't yeah. have been him. Yeah. Because that almost makes the situation seem more twisted than it mm. actually was. Yeah. Because I don't think he had ill intention in going. No. But then coupled with the fact that he's secretly in love with her and then has mm. gone to, you know, offer her some support while she has a secret abortion from a boyfriend who happens to be his best friend. I yeah. Mean, it's a bit Maybe messy, isn't the it? Smartest move, yeah. A bit when messy. You, I mean, when I'm saying it, oh God, it's right messy, isn't it's it? It's a messy situation <laughs> to be in, a hundred percent. Um, yeah, I think you're right, but I, then I think there, and I think he felt that he was doing the right thing there. You know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind His of like his intentions were good, but yeah, I mean, you know, Freddie isn't the brightest blessing, but I think that That's he true. sort of he do, he goes with his heart. He sort of goes mm. with what he believes to be the best thing he can do in that yeah. situation. 
and I guess the kiss between him and Anna was always going to happen. Like, but it's just that awkward moment where you're sort of watching it, thinking, "Oh, I wish you weren't doing that," because that is the kind of the catalyst of how the rest of the week plays out. Because Lauren has worked something out. She's basically put two and two together. How she lands on this, I'm not entirely sure, but she realizes basically that Anna must Easy. be pregnant. Yeah, you reckon you would have worked it out? Yeah. Woman's yeah, she'd just been asking Peter about being a young parent and then she'd been throwing up the week before. Didn't she throw up in the cafe the week yeah, before? Yeah, she did. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so it's not publicly. like it weren't that obvious that she'd been thrown up and then she's asking about yeah, being a no young fair. parent. Yeah, yeah, all right, fair enough. I wouldn't say, say oh, clearly that would have gone straight over my head. You'd have been like, she's pregnant, she is. Pregnant. She's pregnant, pregnant. Yeah, you would. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'd Definitely. have just been like, if you say, I'd be like, stop riffing, Ray. Stop talking rubbish. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Bobby, with yeah. armed with this information, sort of runs over to the Vic and walks in just in time to see Freddie and Anna sharing a kiss, which mm-hmm. is which was which was a moment to be fair, because they sort of they sort of parted and then all of a sudden Bobby is there and like watching them and it's sort of like mm. oh and you and in to quote the Simpsons, you can see the moment where his heart breaks into pieces, can't you? Like yeah, his you face visibly can. sort of disintegrates. Oh, I, I, thought, wrote, I thought of you straight away like Rob's heart is also going to have broken down you seen Bobby like that. Bear in mind that my dog was currently lying on the floor whining Aww. about surgery. I was a mess this week. <laughs> Emotionally, I was destroyed. Yeah. Poor Bobby. I mean, yeah, he Bobby. is visibly heartbroken. His girlfriend and his best mate, he who he loves more than anybody else in the world, these two, I think, genuinely. I yeah. think yeah. probably more than his own family, he loves these two. And they have literally betrayed him in front of his eyes. Was there a moment where you thought we were going to get Psycho Bobby back? Because when he was attacking Freddy, I thought, you know, fair enough, I can understand why you're doing that, you know, kind of punching into Freddy. But I sort of was like, oh, my God, is he going to reach for, like, a music box or something? <laughs> like, is that where this is, is that, going? It's going to happen again in time. Psycho for Bobby's yeah, back. I no, I didn't at all. I just thought, yeah, fair enough. Mm. Like, considering what you've just seen and what you've just found out about him yeah. being pregnant and stuff, yeah. I think that's a fair reaction. I were more surprised. Well, not surprised, but... I thought it was kind of funny in a way because Fred is quite a lot taller than Bobby. He probably he? could take him. I thought he yeah. got some balls there, Bobby. Go on. Like, fair Bobby enough. Bit, Even though I Bobby love Freddy balls. and I get the situation, but mm. yeah. I think the I think the most wrong thing about that as well is that Freddy and Anna were like bonding over the fact that she's just aborted Bobby's baby. It's like a bit more twisted in it. Well, let me just ask this. So they did this, okay. this the termination thing, and it was one of these. Yeah. We've had we've had this before in EastEnders, and I always forget how this works. So the two pills, right? You take yeah. one pill, and then I think like the next day you take the next one. Is it or a couple of days later? I'm um, not. Don't know. I actually don't. I know that they take. I know that you can take meds like Anna has, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they did this with Whitney, and I think there was sort of questions as to whether she would abort the baby or not. And I was sort of, because I I was genuinely delighted to sort of see this scenario play out where a woman kind of goes, yeah, I don't I don't want to do this. This is my choice, yeah, and this yeah, is what yeah. I'm going to do. Totally. And for it then to just play out like that, no mm-hmm. sort of changing her mind, no being put under pressure, no sort of infection that's come up so that makes her infertile for the rest of her true. life. Yeah, you know, yeah, nothing true. like that. Yeah, yeah. This has just been a simple, I don't want that to happen. And I'm so take that a tablet and... Yeah, and so that hasn't happened. Yeah. He hasn't taken well, the second tablet yet, which kind of always leaves that question in the air. Like can you can it, the baby yeah, survive on just I'm... the one tablet? I don't know. I don't know. I know that the uh, that there's like a gap in between taking it, but then they said to her that they were given they were giving her a pregnancy test to do in three weeks' time. So yeah, it's like to make a week sure. in between the tablets. I don't know. I feel like there's not a lot of point in Anna being pregnant without Bobby there. If I, no, I said this at no. the time, so I think this is it. So I've hopefully I think that's how but, it's all played out. And fair play to them for doing what like you've that. just said though as well. Had she told Bobby about it, we would have had a lot of that and a lot of you know her having to discuss making that decision with somebody else. And... Yeah. Well, they basically had the same. Anna and Bobby basically had the exact same conversation about this as we did last week, where it was just sort of like imagining what Bobby's reaction would have been at that moment. Mm -hmm. And even Anna said, you would have proposed, you would have been planning the houses, you Mm -hmm. would have been doing this, you would have been doing that. And Bobby's like, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, you would, Bobby. He totally would. He told he would. Of course he would. Which, in a way, would is a nice way to go about it rather than forcing some forcing someone to feel pressure in a different way of I'm not ready to be a dad either. Yeah. It swings around. You can see both sides in this scenario, can't mm. you? You can see yeah. why Anna didn't want to tell Bobby and you can yeah. see why Bobby was upset that Absolutely. he didn't tell him. Because it was difficult. His, I don't his embryo, can we call it? I don't <laughs> his know. Sperm. Yeah. His sperm. You, you can know. say that, Rick. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a, a awkward situation. But you know who kind of impressed me was Ian, and I wasn't expecting to be impressed by Ian yeah, advising Bobby this week, right? Yeah. When Ian kind of got grasped with the situation, I was fully expecting Ian to be sitting there going, right, okay, let me just tell you how this works, son. All right. So you go over there. You know, you're the man in the situation. You need to take control of this. All right. She might say she doesn't want the baby. She don't mean it. She don't mean it at this stage. You know, I was fully expecting to go down that path. Mm. But you know what? Ian was fully there saying, whatever she wants, you need to support her. All right. She might not want this baby. That's okay. You need to accept that. You know, it was just like, all right, Ian. Wow. Haven't we grown as a person? Very woke for Ian, weren't Very woke for Ian. Yeah. Very, very, very democracy led for for Ian. I was quite impressed by that. Um, And actually, I thought Ian did absolutely cracking all of this week because. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He had uh, a great little meltdown in the pub because Bobby, armed with the fact that Freddie's betrayed him, Anna's betrayed him, and Cindy takes full advantage of the situation and says, do you know what? Probably best if you just go. I wouldn't want to stay around with all this going on. You go. That'll be the best for you. It'll be best for Anna. Everyone will be happy. And Bobby kind of decides, well, I could go and live with Jane in the Cotswolds. And Cindy's like, hey, your choice. Great idea. <laughs> <laughs> this sort of out. Yeah, this and that was like Cindy, you absolute bitch. You are evil. Really, really, really evil. Um, and Bobby kind of says this to Ian that he's gonna move in with Jane. And so Ian goes into the Vic and starts having a go at Anna. Um yes. and Freddie fires Freddie. And tries to get Freddie to leave London. Yeah, I don't know quite how he thought that was gonna work out, but yeah. I got his thinking. Um and had like a great moment in the Vic where we're sort of like I'm going to lose my, I'm going to lose another kid and nobody else knows what that feels like. Even you, Cindy, do not know what that feels like because you weren't there. And it's mm-hmm. sort of like, yes, Ian, get her told because she doesn't mm-hmm. know. She likes to pretend that she does and make everything about her, but she had no idea. She makes everything that's happened to the Beale kids all of her own like emotional, like as though she's had the toughest life her ever. Grief, what yeah. in the moment kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which she owns the grief and it's nothing to do with her. I, so there are times when I'm sort of like, how dare you even try and grieve your children? Because you weren't there at mm-hmm. any point. In fact, if Lucy hadn't died, you wouldn't even be back in Wolford right now. Yeah, that's true. Technical, God. So. Full circle there, but yeah, true. true. You know? Mm. Um. So it was interesting to sort of see Ian have that moment. And I absolutely love the fact that throughout all of this, We've had a rare piece of character growth for me, and I think you don't actually get that mm. much growth with a character like Ian, which is fine because it's what makes Ian Ian. But we've had that rare sort of character growth from him where he has point blank refused to put Cindy over Bobby at any point. And I think that's yeah, been excellent. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I agree with that, actually. And he's mm. always very kind about Bobby, isn't he? Mm. And like, says what a nice, like, what a nice kid he is, really, yeah. doesn't he? And he's, ne- yeah. yeah, like you say, he's never put Cindy above Bobby. I guess that's because he knows what it's like to lose his kids and he doesn't ever want to risk losing another one. Mm. And maybe Ian's had this revelation during this time of, I'll never put a woman before my kids because mm. he's probably done it in the past. Oh, God, yeah. Let's be real. But do you know times. what else I like? I know that he went in at first saying, you aborted my grandchild to Anna. Mm. But then it weren't so much about He's not angry about that, that is Anyway, yeah, it was no. about the Freddie and Anna situation that mm. the anger's come from yeah, in this yeah, entire yeah. thing. I don't think anyone's really disagreed with the decision that Anna made. No, not really. And I think the fact that she didn't tell Bobby shows more about Bobby and Anna's relationship yeah. wasn't really working. Of course. Of course it does, yeah. And like you say, I think that's I think that's a great point that Ian wasn't he like he's he uses no. it as a bit of an attack line, but it that's hurts. not what he's angry about whatsoever. No. It's a good thing to say at that particular moment while you're having a go yeah. at the girl in front of you, but it's not really the the point of the conversation. Um and I'm pleased that Freddie spent the rest of the week absolutely devastated by his own behaviour. It'd be sort of interesting Bless to sort him. of see where that goes from here, like sort of What's he going to be like without Bobby? And nice that and nice that he were more upset about his friendship with Bobby. Were, th- th- yeah, yeah, that was nice as even well. Even thinking about trying to do anything with Anna, we weren't even thinking about it, were we? Yeah, by yeah. that point, it were. I can't believe I've upset my best mate. It's and going now on. that's those, it. Dra- those drawings are getting torn up and thrown in the bin, <laughs> like they're Maybe all gone. Set on yeah. fire. In yeah, the yeah kitchen ripped sink. up. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. Um. So we finally have that sort of moment where Bobby has decided to go to the Cotswolds. He has yes. decided that's enough. I'm done. I'm out of here. Uh, goes to the cemetery to sort of say goodbye to Lucy. And I think this is the key thing with Bobby. And this is the key point of Bobby's story, that yeah. he 
And Jane sort of touched on it when we last saw her, that he's never just he's never forgiven himself for what happened to Lucy. That was when he was a kid. He has changed a lot as a person since then. He's grown a lot as a person since then. He is not that person anymore. And he needs to stop sort of being haunted by the memories of something that he did when he was a child. Mm -hmm. So he kind of goes to the cemetery and realises the only way that he's ever going to do that is to sort of leave all of that behind. Cindy insists on going on going as well. I don't know why Cindy, because she just wants to keep attacking Bobby. That's all this is. It's just anger from Cindy's part. And Bobby sort of rips her a new one there and then. Not enough, I would argue. I think he could have gone in much worse. But what? Yeah, more but that's said? it. Were enough for Bobby though. Bobby's not that kind of guy no, to know. go any further, really. But no, I agree. I was so happy that he stood up for himself. Yeah, so was I. And it yeah. were it were a perfect scene actually. And this is where this is why I said when we started this episode where I was saying, you know, it kind of made sense for Bobby to leave by the time this scene's finished. It's like, mm. how is he ever going to move on? He's got constant reminders of Lucy there. Yeah, it's where it happened. He is known as the kid who killed his sister whilst yeah. he's there. And always will be in Wolford as well. Yeah, yeah. He can start afresh in the Cotswold, can't he? Nobody yeah. knows him other than yeah. Jane and Masu. Do we think so? Well? Yes, yes. Bear that in mind. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, you know, when you've got someone like Mo going around, like, like making caustic comments and yeah. really unkind comments about, like, what about what happened with Lucy? Like, that's mm. always going to be there. So, yeah, you're right. To get away from Walford, I think, was probably the best thing for his mental health and for him mm. to grow as a human being from there. Yeah. And I think losing Freddie and Anna is the sort of enough to kick him up the ice and go, enough. I'm yeah. out of here. See you later. Yeah. I'm done. Um, so at the end of the week, nice, nice one last night. Shot of Jane. Jane came back into Walford. I was quite pleased to sort of see Jane back in Albert yeah, Square. Yeah. He he says goodbye to everybody, hugs them. Cindy sort of watching from the darkness, sort of smugly. Nice little jars between uh, Cindy and Jane just before <laughs> nice she left. Cardigan. I love Cindy. I'm sorry. I know. I know you don't. Involved, I, she's a great she's character. Brilliant. No, she is a great <laughs> character. And I'm, ri but it's to the point. This week was the first time I was sort of like, oh, I can't wait for you to fall flat on your face. Because sometimes with the soap bitch, you're sort of just like, yeah, go cool on, Queen. Keep doing all this stuff. But yeah, like, keep going. Your week, time's coming. Yeah. Your time's when coming, you Cindy. Bobby, don't you worry. When you go for Bobby, I was sort of like, oh, bitch, you're going down. <laughs> she is going to be on her own as well when it all kicks off. Because I am I think when it does kick off, even Junie is going to shun her yeah. at some point for something, which is why I'm wondering, yeah. is she going to have an affair on Junior as well? He's going to choose his dad over Cindy, for sure. Yeah, I think it'll ultimately end like that as well. Yeah, because I think you had a great... sisters are involved as well. Yeah, exactly. And I think you had a great bit of insight last week. We were saying, I think those two are just going to like get closer and closer and closer yeah. to the point where... The yes, the reveal is going to hurt ten times more because George is going to be like, "I thought we were getting closer for you," but I think that's going to be the point where George will ultimately be the one to win Junior's heart over Cindy a hundred percent, and it's going to leave Cindy completely and utterly out in the cold, and she will blame everybody else, Literally. everybody else, yeah. Everybody oh, just else. wait until Kathy finds out. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait till Kathy finds out. There was that great moment in the kitchen between Cindy and and then Kathy this week, where Kathy just had a great rant at Cindy, decided to just bring up the affair that she had thirty years ago, had nothing to do with the situation, but sort of pointed out that clearly the apple hasn't fallen far from the tree as far as Anna was concerned and cheating harsh, on somebody. Yeah. <laughs> it was brilliant. I liked that a lot. So yeah. Kathy, I cannot wait to see her find out mm. about the junior thing. If anything, I'm more I'm most excited about her reaction because it's going mm. to be really, really satisfying. Um, no junior's theme for Bobby, which I thought was a bit uh, was a bit yeah, poor show. I would have liked to have seen which, one with Bobby. Deserved one. Well, I think that means he's going to come back then, surely. Well, right? If it's not had a Julia's theme, it can't yeah. be fully over. No, right? Because if if Karen can have one and then come back two weeks later, Bobby certainly can. But Bobby should have had one. Bobby like, should have had one. Hundred percent should have had one. Because I think actually, once you have reached that point of like his story, kind of hit a full circle at that point mm. in in many ways. I would have liked to yeah. talk about it a lot longer. I do. I have to say, I think this week is sort of like this week was what it was. But I would have like I, I crammed I, into I, one I loved, week. Yeah, I loved Bobby, so I would have liked. I wanted more of the Cindy and Bobby dynamic. I think mm. they, their relationship could have been really interesting, like spread out over a long period of time. When you lose one of the actors, you can't do a lot about that, so it's not exactly yeah. anybody's fault. But it kind of happens that way. Um, so, yeah, I think one day Bobby might be back. I really hope he is. I obviously wish Clay Milner Russell all the luck in the world, and yet not that much luck so that he has to come back to EastEnders exactly. one day. Yeah. 
But do you think Jane might be back for the 40th and we'll Maybe. be sued? Because why didn't Maybe. the suit get mentioned? Just so that we can see that Bobby's going to, you know, have a better time, better time, so to speak. You know, he's got a uh, fellow maybe. Muslim there because that was obviously. I don't know. Would you want to live with the man that slept with both your gran and your mum? I think that'd be a bit weird. Oh, I didn't think it like that. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's Albert Square. Yeah. I mean, Bobby's with his, Bobby's with his sister, isn't it? so yeah, you know that's what I mean? true. Does that's it really true. Matter? Yeah, Bobby's going to be like, yeah, fair play. Things. I understand that. I understand. We're a fit family. I understand. <laughs> See, <laughs> don't go. blame you. No, uh, Gold Star this week, Ray. Oh, I'm. Well, I know. Who you're? Well, who are you going to give yours to? One of them. Yeah, surely. Who, oh, so your... I'm going to give I'm going to give mine to Ian. Actually, that was exactly what I was going to do if you'd have said Bobby. Bobby and there Ian for the Gold Stars this week. Yeah. yeah, Ian. Ian had a great week. Really, Surprise really enjoyed me, Ian, Ian this yeah. week. Yeah, yeah, this is more of Ian. Still had some, Ian, still had some Ian moments in yeah. there, but on of course the he Earl. did. Of course yeah. he did. But I, it's just every time I see Ian back on screen at the moment, I'm just so glad that he's back. And he's always got Bobby's back. Yeah. Since he's been back. He's had Bobby's back, so, yeah. Yeah. Ian. I just Ian want more, Ian, actually. I think, Agreed, obviously, yeah. I think, because I think we've pretty much decided that the Cindy, we don't know, but I think we've pretty much decided that the Cindy Junior thing is going to be Christmas, right? So I think, think. That, I think, I think. So I think the Bills are going to have quite a big Christmas. So Ian's going to be on it quite a bit over the coming moments. So that's good. Is it going to be that and the Panasar stuff coming to a head I think as well so, for yeah. Christmas? Yeah. I think, both... yeah, I think the Panasars and the Bills are going to be for Christmas. Mm. After that, in the run-up to the anniversary, who bloody We still knows. don't know. Still don't know. Still don't know. Yeah. Right, ladies and gents, uh, Bobby and Ian for the Gold Stars, and we'll finish our podcast, as usual, with some comments from you. So we've got a comment on Instagram from Sarah Foster who says, I'm so glad Bobby got to leave on his own terms and to finally stand up for himself. But I was sad he didn't make up with Freddie and gutted he didn't get a Julia's theme. Yeah, so I don't think that's something I was most upset about. I was like, uh, where's the piano? Thank you. Yeah. Someone, someone did an edit online that works really, really well with the music as well. So it's up, it's up there on Twitter if you want to find it. Someone has edited a Julia theme. So we Bobby's can exit. have our closure. Yes, yeah. we need our closure. It just makes um, me think he's coming back soon. Yeah, I hope not so. A Julia's theme. I really, really hope so. Um, if, if if anything, you're you're the one that's caused this because you were sat there like, does nothing, does Julia's theme mean nothing these days? When Karen came back a few weeks later, so maybe they've taken that on board. <laughs> Do you reckon they have to have been in it for like a certain amount of years, like continuously for him to then go, now you get a Julia's theme? Maybe, maybe you have to. But I would have thought that Bobby, like being a legacy character, would have, and like yeah. the fact that he's quite a well-known character, you know, I True. think he I think he would have earned one. I think it would have been appropriate for him to have one. But, you know, I suppose not everybody can have one, but I, mean. I think it would Is have it... suited, I think he would have deserved one myself. But, mm -hmm. you know, what do I know? Albert Sims, here's a nice bit of trivia for us. So I thought this was very interesting. Albert Sims, first of all, asked, I've often been curious, does the studio have a plot of land set up to look like a cemetery or do they use an actual existing cemetery and just add a prop headstone while shooting? And Charlie Edge has replied to that and said, large scenes are filmed in a cemetery in Watford. Smaller scenes are filmed in a little grass patch on the set. Oh, oh that's quite good. Oh, that's quite there good. we Are go. There? Obviously, I knew that. Obviously. I was wondering this, though, I when they were filming that. it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's interesting. Like, I, I, I kind of assumed that they'd sort of got a field or something and then they have, like, a load of tombstones and they sort of wheel out to make it look like a graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stick them in the ground, then take them God, all the way again. that'd be expensive. They're expensive, aren't they, Edstone? Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Well, I imagine Not they're made out of... Oh, no, I imagine they're made of, like, polystyrene or something and just painted to look like marble. You can do anything with, like, if you're a clever props person these days, can't you? That's true. Yeah, yeah. true. Uh, we've got a comment from Luke Gahan who said, Did anyone else notice Blondie Atomic playing in the background when Anna was chatting to Freddie? My husband walked past the TV and picked it up and was like, Oh, dear, whatever's going on here is about to explode. That's why they're playing that song. I think you may be right. I'm surprised you didn't notice well that, Ray. DJ Riesler, I, you will normally notice this sort of thing, don't you? I always usually spot songs in the background. I did not yeah. spot that. But what I did spot this yes. week was yes. a scene with uh, Bobby and Freddie when yes. Freddie had just found out about Anna being pregnant or okay. not long known. And Daddy Cool was playing in the background, oh, which I thought nice. was quite fitting. Yeah, yeah I noticed I that. Never but, no yeah. I never noticed that. The only time I ever I ever register the music in the background is if a song comes on that I like. And I'm just so, and then I pay more attention to the songs. I'm just sort of just going dancing along to the song in the background, disregarding everything that goes on in the scene. Normally, uh, respect by Erasure. I always listen when that comes on because I love that song. That sometimes comes on in the vic, yeah. and I'm all and I'm off. Yeah. 
So whatever is going on on screen, I'm just sort of like, baby, please give me a little wrist. Just having a great time on the sofa. The the Vic ones are more noticeable when it's yes. to do with the scene, definitely. Yeah, very often they are, yeah. But so often, whatever song's playing in the background has got something to do it's with relevant. the scene that's going on. Yeah. I'd yeah. love that job. I'd absolutely love yeah. that job of pick yeah. the song to go in the background of this scene. I'd yeah. be there. You'd be there, I'd be there wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd be very I'm waiting with that. my dad, um, Fleetwood Mac, tell me lies, tell me sweet little lie. Mm. I love it when that's in background. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know what's going yeah. on. You'd be, uh, you'd be, you'd be very, very good at that job. Uh, right, that's it then for all another week. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. If you'd like to send us any comments, questions, or feedback, you can do the following. You can find us on Facebook at Albert Square After Dark, on X and Instagram at E20 After Dark. Wrong. If you watch it on YouTube, don't Twitter. forget to like and subscribe. You can listen to us on Apple and all your favourite podcast sites. Drop us an email at E20 After Dark Podcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to buy us a coffee, you can do so by going on buymeacoffee.com forward slash E20 After Dark. Twitter. Yes, you can. And don't Thank forget you very much. to... Go on X because Rob's all over X. He loves a bit of X, don't you? X, there's no such thing as X. It's a letter. That's all it is. X. Ugh, awful name. Um, and don't forget, you can also leave us a review if you like. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go and yeah. stick a review on there. That'd be nice. Just, just give us your thoughts on there. Only if they're good minds, you know. If you, if you. Oh yeah, don't leave us a bad review. Don't. You've got nothing nice that. to say. Keep it to yourself. Got just give nice us five. If you want to give us five stars, do that. <laughs> that's okay? how it works. Yeah, that's how consumer feedback works. Only tell <laughs> us if it's good. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. That's it, ladies and gents. Thank you very much. We'll be back same time next week. I suspect the restuff is going to kick off big time next week. It's just a feeling. I know nothing. It's just a feeling. Until then, it's goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. See you next week. Goodbye. Bye.